Hey everyone, and welcome to the Creative Financing Podcast. I'm Nicole Kamanjian, and I'm here with Cody Richard and the host of the show, Jeff Rappaport. This is episode 205, and today we're going to be going over creating true passive income through notes. While listening to this podcast, if you guys have any questions, please head over to our Facebook group, the Creative Financing Podcast. If you're not part of the community already, just head over to Facebook and search the Creative Financing Podcast and ask to join. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can always ask your questions in the comments below. Otherwise, if you guys are getting any value from this episode, please like, share, and subscribe to the show. It lets us know that you're enjoying the content and learning, and it really motivates us to continue creating episodes for you guys. We also want your feedback. So wherever you're listening, please rate and review us. So today we're going to talk about true passive income. I I think it's something that everyone is talking about in the last 12 months. And but today we're going to talk about real passive income. So, Nicole, I know that you have a a duplex that you rent out both short term, long term. Is that right? Yeah. So one unit's Airbnb and the other is a long term tenant. So you make income from that duplex right every month correct but you're still involved in it correct Uh, even though you have a property manager and uh, you have someone that's managing your short-term rental you're still actively involved yeah I have to manage the managers (laughs) right right which which is pretty normal and but people call that passive income because uh, you're not doing the day-to-day operations and management of it, but you you are still managing the management, correct? Right. Perfect. All right. So we're going to, I'm going to show you today how to truly get passive income where all you do is cash a check. That would be be a good gig to me. Yeah. Right. All right. So let's talk, let's take an example that we are currently working on and this example, I won't tell you exactly where it is, but it's in Illinois. And it is, it, it's funny, it has become, it started out as one house, then it became two houses, and now we're up to three houses. And if these numbers seem super low, uh, they are. And it really just depends what market you're in. And so let's talk about what these are. So one's, uh, two of them are two bed, one bath. And I'm gonna let you, Cody, share your screen. Will do. Share and draw it out. So is this our financial calculator? Uh, Not yet, but we'll get there but at least everyone can see what we're talking about. Um, So Jeff, you said this turned into three. Does that mean like, uh, is it the same owner? Like, yes. Yes. Okay. And I'll tell you why it's turned into three in just a second, as soon as I can. Sorry, Cody. Um, no, you're okay. I don't know why. There we go. That should work. Okay. Get my screen shared here. All right. Okay. You said two of them are two bed, one bath? Actually, let me tell you exactly. So one is a three bed, one bath, that I know for sure. Okay. One is a two bed, one bath. And another one is three bed, one bath. Okay. All right. And these are all owned free and clear. Got it. So two of these have been rentals. One is where the owner lives, owner occupied. Okay. And 
he wants a total of eighty thousand dollars for all three gotcha are they bringing in good income on the two rentals so the two bedroom should be getting 650 and the two three bedroom should get probably 750 ish okay okay so about 2150 total so we we could pay $80,000 cash i it's kind of hard to figure out what these are worth, but they're, they're probably worth somewhere in the forty to fifty thousand dollar range. Okay, the, yeah. the two bedrooms probably only worth like thirty five, and uh, the two three bedrooms are probably worth somewhere between forty and fifty. Okay, so forty to fifty ARV right now. Yeah. Uh, Either way, really. So they're, they're in pretty good condition. Uh, they've been well taken care of. And his house has been updated. Okay. And not all of this isn't super important, but just yeah. so everyone can get an idea of what we're dealing with here. Okay. So one of the things that, uh, and we did this on the last couple of episodes, is when I'm looking at income property, I'm always looking at what are the, the current rents compared to uh, what the price is. So in this case, I'm looking at total rents, uh, which are a little less than what numbers I'm giving you, like the seven, uh, one of the three bed, one bath owner occupied, so it's not even rented. Yep. Uh, the other one I think is rented for six fifty, and I think the two bedroom, one bath is rented for five fifty. So right now it's like twelve hundred dollars. Gotcha. Okay, and the reason that he wants eighty thousand, it has nothing to do with the value of homes or anything. <laughs> he wants to move. And the property that he wants to buy is $80,000. However, we have chatted with him because really what I don't want to do is I, I really don't want to pay cash for this. And uh, so the, the three bed, the three house deal just came about yesterday. Before that, it was a two house deal and he was hoping to get 80 with two houses and I was more like at 40. And he he wanted, then he wanted 50. And so we, we've negotiated back and forth, right? But he is willing to, to, if we can give him a decent down payment, he is willing to let the income that we pay him cover his mortgage. Uh, he's okay with that. On his new property that he bought? Correct. That's okay. right. All right, so we, we are going to look at two different ways that we can structure this, and then uh, we'll go through what some of the results are. You know, how does that work out for us? And uh, so first is, all right, so could we pay cash for these three properties? Nicole, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, 80K is kind of cheap <laughs> well the, the, i mean i don't know about the, the area but yeah so let's say could. let's say that the two three beds are worth 45 each and uh, let's say the two bedrooms worth 30 okay so we're at 120 right there we'd be buying these you know, obviously we're going to verify the condition of them and everything but we're at about 66 percent loan to value mm -hmm. Would that be something that I, either or both of you would look at being okay with in terms of paying cash? Yeah, especially as a buy and hold with those rents the way they are and the way they can be. Right. Yeah, and as long as like repairs don't bump that up too much more, like there isn't much needed to be done to them, I think that would be okay. Yes. However, I, I don't, 
for me, it, I, I really don't want to have to go. Uh, we, we would buy this either with our own funds or uh, hard money and uh, or private money even on something like this. But ultimately, refinancing it into more residential is not what I want to do. That, that, that is something I've kind of stayed away from my entire career. And uh, I really don't want to use my credit to finance $80,000 worth of three houses. But uh, we, we are seeing that there's potentially good income here, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go to a new page and let's figure out some ways that maybe we can structure some offers. Okay. <laughs> okay you can get started if you want I'll pull okay. it up. all right so the taxes on these run about my guess is is that they're going to be about Let's call it about $2,500, $2,700 for the year, for all three. Okay. Which, uh, depending, again, where you live, th th this is a higher tax rate state. Illinois gets you on taxes for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were in Utah where we live, uh, well, at least Cody and I live, that, uh, that one, there's nothing like you're not buying anything for thirty thousand uh, dollars, not even close. But uh, the taxes, twenty six hundred dollars a year is probably a four hundred thousand dollar, four to five hundred thousand dollar piece of property. So it, it varies, and I, I'm totally estimating this because I, I would assume that they will be reassessed. And even though it's still not very much money, let's be on the high side rather than the low side. And let's put insurance for, uh, let's say, $1,800 for the year. That would be $50 a month per each one, which, again, may be on the high side. Okay. The utilities, uh, what my goal would be is that we won't pay any. Gotcha. Fat zero. Yes, zero. I would also say, uh, as far as management, we won't need any. Okay. Does this sound familiar? I, I mean, we're working through something very similar to what we worked through when we did the case studies on your two properties, Cody. Yeah, I'm interested to see where the shift happens because I've heard of creating the true passive income, but I don't know how to do it. Okay. Uh, what else do you think are potential? Uh, so there might be repairs. Repairs right? and maintenance, yeah. yeah there, there won't be any. Um, there won't be any maintenance. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So we're eliminating all of this stuff, okay? Yeah, it looks pretty good so far. All right, so but what, what do we got? We got about $4,400 in taxes and insurance. Yep. Okay. To be honest, we're not going to pay that either. So, okay. All right. The plot thickens. Yeah, right. <laughs> like stunned over here. Zero expense. Any kind. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it'll, it'll start to make sense to you in just a second. <laughs> um, all right. So let's let's start looking at potential offers. So let's say but we already know what the price is that we need to get to. So, but we're, we're going to come up with, let's say, three offers for, uh, and three offers other than cash, and cash is going to be, let's say, $70,000. Gotcha. Okay. So, offer number one, let, let's call it um, 
let's say we'll make an offer for 83,000. Okay. Purchase price of 83. Yep. And we're willing to even put down, let's say $12,000. Okay. It's a pretty significant percent. It is, That's right? Usually do. It is. But why do you think I'm willing to do that in this particular case? Because there's no expenses. So your cash on cash would still be pretty good. My, my cash on cash is going to be good, but it's such a low price. And we know something yeah. about this seller, right? That that he needs a certain amount of money to be able to put down on. Uh, and th my, my guess is 12,000, probably too low. He probably mm -hmm. needs 20% uh, yeah. to put down. But I want to give him a couple of different options here. And so we'll, we'll see what, what kind of transpires, okay? But so that we're financing 71,000 right Good question do you make offers a lot of times expecting like a certain part of it to be rejected like the down payment sometimes, of okay. sometimes uh sometimes there's a particular offer that i like that mm -hmm. that i'm more interested in getting accepted so sometimes i'll only make that offer and other times so i i'm looking at if i can create two three four offers they may not all give me the same exit strategy, right? Yeah. So if I'm looking for a particular exit strategy, then I better tailor them to what I want. If I'm okay with, hey, I, I make money on this one, I make money on that one, then it, it's all right. Uh, I will go with whatever you know the seller is interested in doing. But you probably more than anyone knows that uh, especially right now, I, I really don't want them to take my cash offer. Uh, and if they do, it's because I've lowered it even more. And uh, I, there's, we'll, we'll make some money somewhere. And yeah. so on this case, we're going to offer 12. And so we're going to finance 71,000. Okay. So that's, so 71,000 is PV, right? On the that is calculators. Correct. Yeah, okay. I have it pulled up here just to walk through it as a group as well. So yeah, seventy thousand okay. present value. All right, so it I, I could do any number of things here, right? I, I could offer principal only payments. I could offer an interest rate, um, but I just assume that I already know what this seller needs, what this money is for, right? So, and. He has not really expressed any interest in how much money he gets over time. He just wants it to cover his new house. Okay. So if I gave him, you know, if we figured out 71,000 at 4% amortized over 30 years, okay. the payment is what? Almost 339. Yeah. 338 and change. So that, that might be enough to cover what he needs um but I, i'd rather be sure so mm -hmm. i think on this offer i'm just going to offer him 500 dollars a month would that be like a principal only or with principal a only principal okay only okay gotcha so 500 a month principal only yep If I have 71,000 and I divide it by 500, that means in 142 months, it would be paid off in full. So I could offer him something like that, where uh, we'll run this you know, almost 12 years until it's paid in full. Or I could give him like a 10-year balloon or something like that. Uh, so I think we would do on this one um maybe a how about an eight year balloon so eight year okay. yeah so 500 times 96 
months is 48,000. 50, so I'd still owe the seller $23,000. Um, so you just took the monthly payment times the number of months to get yeah. how much is owed pretty much? Yeah. So the, actually, let's change that. So let's make it okay. nine years. And so that would be nine times 12. It's 108 times 500. 54,000. Okay. Now I'm going to owe the seller 17,000. So the balloon 17,000. So the purchase price minus down payment minus how much you've made in payments. That's right. And how much you say that was? 17,000. 17 K. Yep. All right. Okay. I'm great with that. Um, if that works for the seller. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and if the seller came back to me and said, I'll take this, but I want 20 grand down, I would say, all right, let's make it $80,000 and I'll do 20. Why would I do that? I will show you as we get <laughs> the results. I'm glad that one was a rhetorical question. I yeah. Was... Yes. Yeah, I, I am a big proponent of not leaving money in deals. Mm -hmm. However, sometimes if it's small amounts of money or it's for short periods of time, it's, it's a good use of your money. And if you have access to equity lines or business lines of credit or even private lenders, right, that uh, could put up that 12,000, 15, 20 grand, uh, for, I don't care, but whatever, it's a small amount of money, right? If I paid someone 10% on their money on $20,000, it's going to equal $166 a month. And uh, so uh, what I'll look at is what's more important? Uh, do I need that $166 a month in cash flow? Or would I rather keep my money in the account rather than put it in this property? Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Let's look at offer number two. And maybe we'll just do two offers. And uh, because in reality, what I normally will, will do in this case is make one a shorter term, one a longer term. Hmm. There's no reason to, right? Yeah, would, and you still include that that cash offer too, right, Jeff? Yeah, so that I would still just would. be your third. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So offer number two. Well, let's say that uh, we will offer the eighty thousand. Purchase price eighty k. So the only thing that I'm a little bit concerned about in the first option is the down payment. Mm -hmm. Is that enough money for him? Okay. So on this one, let's make the down payment a little more. So let's make the down payment 30,000. That's quite a bit but, more, way over 20. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, actually, let, let's change that. Let's make it <laughs> 40000 Oh, boy. I thought you were going down. You went up more. Yep. Jeff is like, challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah. All right. 50% down. Yeah. But we're going to borrow that in first position. Um, and okay. we, 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 we have some choices to make. Let, let's make sure that maybe not on this episode, but our next one, that, Nicole, you remind me to talk about, do we want to make this deal on all three of these properties or do we want to break it out and have a separate purchase and sale for each one? Okay, will you remind okay. me to ask that question? Yeah. All right. So we're going to borrow this money against this property. So we're going to look at doing a subordination. Okay. So 40,000. First of all, do you think I can go find $40,000 to borrow? What did we think that 
Worst case scenario that these properties are worth 120, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. seems you think I can go find someone that would be okay lending 40 grand for, uh, and let, let's say I can borrow this at 8%. Simple interest, right? So that, I'm going to be around that 250 to $66 a month range, okay? Let's now talk about, so we still owe the seller 40 grand, mm -hmm. right? So let's just figure out if, if he's buying a property for 80, he certainly is going to get good terms if he goes and puts down 40, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, Jeff, so I have a, I have a question. Sorry. Uh -huh. uh, so when you say uh, you're going to, in first position, the 40K, does that mean uh, what you're talking about is like borrowing that, the yep. private money? Yep. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's nothing owed on this property. So we're we're going to ask the seller, hey, allow us to borrow against these properties. We're going to give you all that money that you're now going to go put down on your other house. And then mm -hmm. we're going to secure the rest of your equity in second position. We'll continue making payments on the first. Mm -hmm. And if he was worried about it, I'd be like, hey, uh, the payment's $166. Um is that going to, I mean, worst case scenario came about, um, uh, could you manage the 166 or are you worried that maybe we can't manage the $166, <laughs> right? So yeah, it's not a huge amount. So right. th this probably won't be a hard sell. So we were willing to pay $500 to the seller in payments before, Mm -hmm. uh so why don't we say we'll pay 400 well first thing that i did is i looked at hey what what do you think that this guy will be able to borrow 40 grand at okay so i put forty thousand as present value i put four percent this is going to be owner occupied mm -hmm. at 360 months his payment's 190 dollars 96 cents okay Gotcha. That's low. Well, even if it went up to 5%, maybe his credit's not very good. It's 215, okay? 214 and some change. So why don't we pay him here $350 a month on his equity? So uh, he has a, a note for $40,000, right? Okay. And so if we look at what, what will $40,000 divided by 350 be 114 payments. So let's say that we would do 108, which is nine year balloon. Okay. So uh, we'd ask for 108 payments okay so this is on the one in first position where we're no. holding no the the one in first position is what we're borrowing from a yeah. private okay. individual this is the equity of the sellers of 40 grand in second position gotcha so we'll make payments of 350 a month for 108 months and that will total 37,800 Okay. So we will have a balloon payment of $2,200. Okay. Okay. And uh, so our payment is just about 500, 515, something like that. Does that make sense? Our total payment. So paying the private lender and paying him we're still into this for right around that $500 a month. How much money came from us in this particular offer? None so far. Zero, Zero right? That's why I like this one. And what was the payment to the hard money lender? Like $166. Okay, I see. Got it. 
Is okay. that with it being like 8%? Is that off? Yeah, I used 8% okay. there. And is that so, principal only or interest only? Interest only. So all I did was I took 40,000 times 0 0.08 divided by 12. Oh, 266. I'm sorry. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, hold on. Screwed up. Well, good thing is for me that I can probably borrow this at 6% and it'll be $800. <laughs> so, uh, so th that's what I would put, but th th it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, when I say it doesn't really matter, that an extra hundred dollars isn't going to make or break this deal, is what I'm okay. trying to say. Okay. Um, but I can borrow this at six percent, and uh, and many people could too. I mean, if you had a home equity line, you just took uh, forty grand from it. You more than likely you're going to get around a 5% interest only for the next four or five years before it becomes a principal and interest payment. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now that we've put together our offers, do you have any questions? And then we'll cut this episode off. We'll do another episode and I'll show you what we're going to do. And then I'll show you how you're going to get your passive income um real true passive income no questions this all seems fairly standard so far based on what we've done in the past and deal structuring i'm interested to see where it takes the turn to the truly passive income i'm going to show you two yeah. different ways i'm excited to see how this works out jeff <laughs> okay so no questions nicole no i i've asked them throughout okay, good. i'm getting better at this jeff good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, I want you to ask your questions. Your questions are probably questions that our audience has too. Yeah, so <clears throat> just to go over it really quickly, um, on in the blue writing, uh, the 80K um, purchase price, the down payment is 40K, and then the payment of 200, that's what we're doing private money, right? So that that's the $200 a month payment. Or is for, is for the 40k first, the 40k that we borrowed privately we mm -hmm. are paying the seller 350 dollars for his forty thousand dollars of equity okay so total five or payment is 550 okay yep. got it yep okay yep all right well um certainly if you want to learn more about what we're doing here and how we're doing it. We have resources in our show notes and in the links below. Uh, feel free to reach out. We're always looking for good people to work with. And uh, do you guys have any other comments? No, mm -mm. go out and create some terms. Go out and create some terms. We'll see you <laughs> next time.